Let's learn how to create mock-ups of your both your physical paper planners and your digital planners using Adobe Photoshop. Now, if you are a great, fabulous photographer, you don't need this tutorial at all. You can actually just take real life photos, but for the rest of us who don't know how to photo or stage things or just aren't interested in that, then today's tutorial is for you. Hi everyone, I'm Lisa from Pretty Fabulous and I help online businesses create pretty pages like planner pages using Adobe InDesign and Canva. And today we're gonna learn how to use Photoshop. So if this sounds like you or something you might be interested in, make sure to hit the subscribe button below. I post new videos every Tuesday. Now, if you don't have Photoshop or you've been on the fence about getting it, I will leave a link for a free trial below. All right, we're actually gonna start with three things that I don't recommend, what not to use, and then five that I do recommend. Uh, so the first one is Adobe Dimension. Now, Adobe Dimension is part of Adobe Creative Cloud, and you might get excited like I did because it looks so cool. You can make all of these awesome, amazing objects that are 3D and it will help you render them. Um, and when I say help you, I mean, it's really 3D. Like over here, this coffee cup, as it comes closer, it gets larger, goes away, it gets smaller. Like it knows where the perspective is. Uh, and if you have like an iPad tablet, you can kind of move it around to these different planes. Um, so, you know, yeah, it's really cool. You can move and move it down. The only problem is I don't actually need this feature and I don't think you do either. Um, so. I would say Adobe Dimension right now is a no. Second one is AI. As you know, I love AI tools. I've been playing around with them forever. And a couple of them, you might find a diamond in the rough. Maybe you like this one, um, you know, but for the most part, they're not that great. And I would just say, skip it. You're gonna waste a lot of time trying to search for a pretty image. And then you're gonna get these weird looking things um, that just aren't gonna work. So that's number two. Third one I would avoid is place it. So everyone gets really excited excited by place it. They think it's really easy to place images. And for the most part it is, but I'm going to show you how to use Adobe Photoshop to make that easier today. And the problem with place it is they're all kind of random. Nothing really matches, even if you found one that you liked and the backgrounds are honestly just kind of ugly. So they're really not something I'm excited about. This could be cool for, let's say you had a, um, you know, an Oracle card deck or tarot kind of like notebook, um, but that's it. There are no other images really to go with it. Um, and then you've just like used one uh, item and that's kind of all you got. Um, now thing is there's not a lot of variety in here either. So I would say skip those three. Now, what do I like? So first of all, I would say if you haven't checked out Amy Landino's Good Morning, Good Life sales page, this is the gold standard on how to create a beautiful, photography layout of your product. So this is a planner. It's been beautifully staged. Um, and here we have some transparent backgrounds for these new covers. She's opened up the notebook. She's used that same sort of staging layout that we see in the others. Um, and everything just kind of comes to together. It's like a nice cohesive brand all in one. Now, how can you recreate this? So first thing I would recommend, the number one thing is just DIY it yourself. So you can go to V Flat World. You can buy all the things that you need. You can buy one of these overhead cranes, a beautiful camera. You can buy these backgrounds. You can buy all of these little items that you see. You can buy paper clips. You can buy a stamp. You can buy tape and you can buy a calendar. All of those things that are in this photo background, you can easily purchase and do your own staging. Now, that obviously assumes that you know how to do photography. And for the most part, you probably don't need this expensive camera. You could use your own camera or your phone. Um, the other thing that a lot of people are doing is they're buying these white boxes to do product photography. I would say just keep in mind, this is great for standing up vertical, but that overhead that really looks great for a planner uh, is not really going to work with these white boxes so much, um, you know, of course you can show it standing up, but most people like to see a planner that is laying flat on the ground. So you really want that overhead uh, kind of shot that they have here. Uh, the third option is you can outsource this. So you don't have to DIY it. You can send your products out to someone like Suna and they will do the whole shoot for you. I think they'll even do video for you. Uh, Squareshot is another company. Just search product photography and you can ship your items out or if it's a digital planner, you can just send them to digital planner. I'm sure they have an iPad laying around. Um, these are always great options. So the third option is to get 
get a smart object. So if you go to Adobe Stock, just look up planner mockups, make sure that you get one that is in a Photoshop format. So like this one over here, I think this is pretty cute. So I went ahead and downloaded it. So all you have to do, if you've never bought anything, it's super easy, just hit the license and then it'll let you download it. Um, and then say, open an app. It's going to open it for you in Photoshop. And what you have over here are what are called smart objects. So if you don't know how to use Photoshop, it's super easy. Um, it kind of just does the work for you. So like, let's say I don't like this I, I don't know, purple fuchsia color, I can just double click this and I can change this to green. And I can go through everywhere else, I see that color and I can just kind of make this whole thing green. Um, because maybe that's the color of my planner or that's just what complements uh, my background the best. And it's really easy to just kind of poke around and hit buttons until you get the color that you want. Now over here where it says objects, when you double click on this, it's gonna open it up in a new tab. So all you're gonna have to do is dra drag and drop the JPEGs that I gave you. Now, if you don't have JPEGs, just go ahead and open up any planner that you have inside of Adobe InDesign and go to file export. And then over here, you're going to go ahead and let's just drop this into uh, the desktop. And we are going to say, a new folder, uh, JPEGs, and we're going to choose the format as, you guessed it, JPEGs. And we're going to save all of these out right there. Head back into Photoshop, find those JPEGs that we just created, and we're just going to go ahead and drag and drop these right over here. And I might have to resize it a little bit to drag it. Hit the return key. I'm going to hit uh, the save key and, or I guess I'm gonna hit save again. And there is my page right here on the left. Okay, so that's the left side. So maybe we'll go in and we'll place a page that's supposed to be on this side over here. Oh, I did it again. I can't tell right from left. There we go, a Monday. That's what I was trying to do. And we're gonna go ahead and close this. And then we need obviously this side to match. We're gonna double click over here. And so the nice thing about this, cause it's a smart object, it's actually going to take those um, coils that you see and it's going to make it so that they lay on top. So you don't have to worry about how you're going to make those coils uh, magically be on top, even though it's a photo. So now it looks like these pages were naturally here and they were always here. Clearly green was the wrong color to go with, but I think you get the gist of what I'm doing. So if I wanted to do rose gold, what I can do too is I can just kind of pick up that rose gold color right there with that color picker. And now I can make sure that it matches the rest of this photo by picking out all the right colors. And look at that, how much better is this photo? So these are what you wanna do. You can find smart objects inside of Adobe Stock. You can also find them inside of Creative Market. Just make sure it says that it is a smart object. Um, otherwise, you're just gonna get a flat picture. Um, and then also, so here's the other thing. When you go to any of your stock library photos, most of the memberships have vertical iPads. Um, and for I, my digital planners are all horizontal. I don't create any vertical ones. So it does become an issue. It is harder if you have a stock library uh, to find those. So what I have found is inside of, uh, it's another one, Moyo, it's another uh, stock library photo, you know, mock-ups, but they have horizontal planners in a setting. Now, the only thing that's a little weird about Moyo is everything kind of looks the same. It's all like very neutral colors. Um, so if you're looking for like that pink and green and yellow or whatever your colors are, you're not gonna find it, but that might be better if you just want a neutral background. Another great place to look for templates is inside of Planner uh, Canva. So I just put in iPad mock-up templates and um, we can just pick any of these. We'll say customize this template and then all we have to do is drag and drop one of our planner jpeg images over into this image let me do that now so we have our digital rose gold planner i'm just going to drop that over here now these aren't smart objects uh, so you will have to resize these to kind of fit into 
and lay on top oops, of where that white space is. I did not mean to move that over there. Um, so it kind of looks. So here's the problem because it's not a smart object. What happened to that Apple Pencil? It got eaten by the design. So it looks like it's over here. So luckily this is a layer that isn't always the case. Um, we can say bring forward and now it lays on top. Uh, so you might have to search around for other uh, Canva images just to make sure it does have layers. Fifth suggestion I have is if you have a iPad or any other device that you really love, even though it's not perfect, it's not a, um, what do you call it? Smart object. And still use it with a clipping mask. So if you, all right, so you're going to take this image, you're going to go over here inside Photoshop and you're going to go to the rectangle tool and we're going to put a rectangle right there on top of that black spot. Um, we are going to guess where the edges are. Oops, I need to draw a second rectangle. We're going to go to the selection tool, select that item and kind of line it up. So you can see I've been, I was a little off. So I'm gonna hit the Command T, which is uh, transform to help transform that object. I'm gonna move it. I'm just gonna grab those corners um, and I'm gonna shrink it down over here. And again, I'm just kind of guessing where I think this needs to go and I'm just gonna stretch the bottom. And it's not perfect. But I feel like it's kind of good enough, especially because we have that white border. All right, so once I'm kind of happy with where I've placed this, I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm gonna drop another object over onto there. So I'm gonna drop this weekly layout over here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click this and I'm going to say, um, create clipping mask and it kind of clipped it on there and we're going to turn this around so it kind of fits inside of there and now it looks like we kind of have a page there it's not the best option and that's why I presented it last just a quick recap what do I not suggest the first one was don't use Adobe Dimension uh, the second one is don't use AI. The third one is avoid place it. But what I do recommend is one, you can DIY doing these beautiful layouts yourself, or you can outsource it to someone like Suna or Squareshot. Uh, the third thing is to find smart objects. You can find those on a sto Adobe Stock and Creative Market. And Moyo is a good one for Photoshop smart market objects. Uh, Canva uh, does have some of these images too. Um, and then, but you want to make sure like that pencil, like it's layered. Uh, and then flat photos is only a last resort when you can't find anything else. So hope that was helpful in helping you with your graphic design image marketing. And remember, if you would like to create your own planner, make sure to sign up for my free course, Planner 101. I hope everyone's having a fabulous day and I'll see you later.